Good morning. We are one minute early, so it's it's good to start on time. Once again, guten Tag, as you say uh, in uh, in uh, Austria and, and in Germany. My name is Andis. I would like to start with uh, with a small story happened five years ago in Mam in Moscow. We, are, we were also visiting there, and uh, then during uh, the lunchtime. We speak to, uh, with some guys and we share that we have common passion for aviation. They ask, what kind of aviation? I said, MiG-29. The guy a bit thinked and said, I have an idea and started to make a call. He was calling to Kostya, to a military airport around 150 kilometers outside of, uh, of Moscow. And uh, when Kostya took the call, he said, we have some friends. Uh, they want to fly. How much? How do you think? What was the first uh, answer? Uh, and, and actually, it was a question back what the cost asked. Do they want to shoot also? <laughs> so, you see, uh, you can expect, sometimes you can expect more, uh, uh, more of, of what you are aware of. And also today, we will try to look inside LTE interfaces and see what's that, what, what we could expect more. A few words about myself. Uh, I'm coming from a, a homeland of Microtic, so from Riga, Latvia. Uh, in earlier years, I said I'm with one leg in academic field and uh, with a second leg somewhere in commercial networking. This is still somewhere true. Last year, I finished my PhD studies for University of Latvia, but still. I'm, uh, I'm uh, interested in some researches, also publications. If we have someone with a similar interests, uh, I'm happy to share. And uh, I'm working as trainer and also as consultant for Latvian company, Router LV. This is our main focus, consulting and training. And I also work for European Union in future networking research projects. So uh, the technologies we'll see in some five years somewhere possibly uh, in, uh, in production networks. Uh, another story about flying. Um, Latvians have built more than 10 wind tunnels all over the world. One of them is located in Sigul in Latvia. The largest one, um, if I'm not mistaken, is currently in uh, China, in Disneyland, uh, and it has more than uh, 10 megawatt, three phase uh, engine, uh, which allows uh, humans to fly in there based, based on the wind. And uh, this autumn, uh, in Riga, we are also uh, organizing a training week, after which uh, those who are successful in training will bring to Latvian wind tunnel to fly. But uh, you can find about it more in our stand outside. It's in yellow color. You can find it. Let's jump to our topic today. So LTE. I was wondering, how can you tell that your LTE interface is shining? And uh, then I um, came to the uh, conclusion that uh, you can see it from sysadmin's face. If the sysadmin is happy, LTE is shining. If, if not, then something is wrong with it. And here we have some devices which you can uh, already buy built, uh, with, with built-in uh, LTEs uh, from factory. Um, possibly you have some of them or, or, or even all of them, but they share one common thing and it's a LTE modem which is located inside these devices and um, actually connects our uh, networks to cellular LTE systems. I have uh, some sample um, basic setups here, later we'll also uh, go uh, in more details in, 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 in also theory and, and practical setups, but usually there are two kinds uh, of setups uh, where you use LTE. The first one is to connect your network somewhere either to the internet or some private APNs. Uh, what you see here on the left side, it's a, it's a small house with attached LTE device. What's very beautiful about these S60s is that you can place them not only indoors but also outdoors. Uh, they survive very, very well also Latvian winters where we go down to minus 20, some, sometimes even more with the snow, with, with ice, with rain, and also in some hot environments. So, uh, so the beauty is you can place them outside to have better signals. 
so one uh, the, the the first approach was to connect a, a network and and then get actually your packets out and receive them back the second approach um, if we look like from user perspective uh, it's opposite so we connect somewhere through the LTE and uh, it can it can be either a camera maybe an engine like uh, like in 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 those uh, wind tunnels um, i didn't i didn't emphasize but each such tunnel setup uh, has multiple micro recruiters inside uh, even involved for signaling communications to regulate the wind tunnel power and and, and so on this is also based on micro there so here um, Instead of the camera, could be any IP-capable device. Uh, this morning we heard about LoRa um, protocol, so even we can extend uh, to, to, to the deeper level, but these are the two most popular use cases when, where we use them. Uh, we did experiment in Latvian winter. So this setup has uh, two cameras, a 60 uh, LT unit for, for uplink, uh, two solar panels and also a small uh, wind generator. And uh, with a small accumulator or battery, uh, it was uh, not enough with these sources of energy to fully survive winter. So we had, uh, we had outages. If you are interested in, in these kinds of setups, we can speak later. Uh, let's jump uh, one step farther and look what's happening in uh, ISP network. Uh, so uh, we are usually... Uh, we are usually just configuring our LTE interface, but what happens basically is two things. We send to network our SIM card number and also APN name where we want to connect. Uh, additionally, uh, we need to provide sometimes for authentication purposes username and password. So this is, um, um, this is the source information we pass to the um, LTE network, and there are multiple modules. The first one, which is responsible serving customers, is Node B, uh, which starts uh, um, a sequence of processes. I won't go deeper in, in, in that side. But finally, uh, we expect from provider's network to receive an IP address. And uh, this is now the first step where we'll go deeper in our presentation, what's happening after we have this IP address. Uh, for very basic uh, configuration, what we need is uh, to define APN. A lot of uh, providers, at least in Europe nowadays, uh, have written policies that even if you make mistakes with APN, they rewrite it at their side. So you can, uh, you can test yours with, like, putting APN, I want to test you and see if you still can uh, connect to the provider's network. Uh, I will emphasize a bit later that uh, there are more complex setups with multiple APNs, but uh, usually on a basic one, you just uh, register one APN, and uh, finally, uh, from this basic uh, setup, you expect the running flag here nearby the interface, it's with a yellow, yellow square, so this is the first now uh, milestone for your uh, LTE interface to shine. If the running flag is not, uh, is not coming up, you can see in sysadmin faces, uh, they get uh, very upset with this. Uh, if, if the running flag is there, so the physical part, registration with uh, node B is successful, we can go further. Uh, maybe you also have noticed um, under system packages uh, that for the latest uh, LTE products, no need for LTE package anymore. Um, if you have the earliest generation S60 LTEs, uh, you need to have it. I've seen some customers who tried to uninstall it and then uh, drove to the site to put it back um, because uh, they had uh, like the first generation devices, but with the, with the ones coming from factory right now, LTE package is not, uh, not needed anymore. So uh, the second milestone, and, and later we'll look, go through multiple topics to see how to accomplish it, um, is um, throughput. Uh, we, within this presentation, I will more focus 
on uh, designs, uh, best practice designs and possibilities, what you can configure less on the throughput, but I'll mention key elements, what's necessary actually to go for, for, for highest throughputs uh, possible. So at the moment, uh, the interface looks uh, just uh, somewhere uh, standby on the, on the management uh, session, nothing is happening there, but um, this is the, the second part, how you evaluate. If you're uh, if your interface is shining or not. So the first one is registered, the second one is the maximum throughput it can, uh, it can give you when necessary. Now, when you have uh, connected uh, to um, LTE network, uh, you can uh, receive uh, basically one of the five, uh, sometimes uh, even a combination of these, um, uh, these IPs, and uh, each of them provide you some um, opportunities. I will briefly go through them. So the worst case uh, is private IP4 address. Usually this comes with the cheapest subscriptions. Uh, with uh, this one, uh, you can um, um, make new connections from your device to internet and receive answers, but you cannot uh, get to the device uh, directly from the, inter um, from the internet without some fancy port forwarding on uh, carrier level, which they normally don't allow uh, so easily. Uh, so uh, the workaround here, if you cannot go to the higher uh, subscription plans and receive different um, kinds of addresses, is to do a VPN connection out from the device itself to the data center. So you have to find or rent somewhere a data center with a public IP. Uh, there are multiple of PPP VPNs uh, like SSTP, OpenVPN, which you can do, and, and that's it. Then you can have uh, some kind of uh, two-way routing capabilities. Uh, the second um, type of um, Addressing is still private, but connected within private uh, APNs. You can uh, compare uh, private APNs somewhere with VLANs throughout the provider's network. So uh, with such setup, you can have a lot of uh, devices uh, isolated from internet, but they can communicate each with other and sometimes with a data center. Uh, for example, in, uh, we have some uh, projects in Europe for, uh, for radars which make uh, pictures when you drive too fast, uh, also um, some electrical charging stations uh, where we have hundreds of those uh, units connected in mobile networks and they are in private APN. So they, uh, they can't be reached from outside. Uh, sometimes it's a challenge to update software uh, because they directly cannot go to the update server, but if you organize something locally, uh, you, you can live with that. So um, these, uh, these um, IPs are reachable between them, so that's good. Uh, also, um, if, if you have connection to data center to the same APN, uh, you can reach them from data center, but you cannot reach them from outside. And, and usually you do it for specific security reasons. Uh, next, um, you have a public uh, but uh, non-static uh, address which might change in a while. So with this one, it's much better than with the first type of addresses because you can connect there from outside. The only worry is that uh, if it changes, you need to update it at your side. And, and there is a beautiful feature um, which can be configured under IP cloud. Uh, if you browse there, uh, you can generate a DNS name. It's a bit uh, long one. Uh, you can have some alias to the name with a shorter syntax, uh, but um, if the IP address of um, LTE interface will change, it will also update your DNS name. So pointing to DNS, you can get to your device. And um, it solves a, a lot of uh, situations here. Finally, uh, the last from IP4s, um, uh, this one is a static public. You can run servers behind such uh, device, you can connect there directly. Um, be careful uh, to implement proper security, so if you go with the factory uh, firewall setups, uh, that's fine. Uh, if you erase the factory, then I've seen a, a lot of cases uh, where you forget about uh, firewall, even worse, you forget to change password for username admin and after some time uh, your device uh, is a bit locked out already, either your user is disabled or with a lower um, um, user group rights. Um, and uh, if it's far away, it's uh, again a, a problem uh, how to deal with it. 
So the, the, the best uh, to have proper security, proper credentials, um, and uh, not, to get, uh, not to get in such situations. Uh, if you want to experiment and do a small local science, you can place one in a public address and see how much it takes. Uh, I bet less than 12 hours uh, will, and someone will hack it. Uh, finally, um, the fifth type of address, IP6, uh, we have uh, in, in Latvia already a uh, few years a possibility to get uh, IP6 uh, address uh, on uh, on your LTE subscription. Later, I'll also show some examples. We just uh, had also a presentation of IP6, so all routing uh, features can be used also here. And what's interesting, you can combine it also together with IP4 uh, APNs and addresses. At the moment, with our telecoms, it's a bit challenge to provide both static public IP4 address and static um, IP6 address. Th there is. Um, there is uh, some issue, but um, but anyway, you can you can have uh, the, the dual stack here. Uh, let's go next. Um, LTE bands. We have multiple of them. Uh, not all uh, LTE modules support all of them. If you look a bit below, these are LTE bands uh, for Europe. And uh, on LTE interface, uh, you can either leave it as is, and then the modem will decide which band is better, uh, or you can uh, tick um, and then point on which bands you want to work. Uh, in in our experience with multiple hundreds of uh, LTE uh, LTE devices, we see them mostly working on band three and and then band seven as the as the, as the next uh, somewhere also band twenty appears. But um, uh, we we've, we've had um, also multiple cases where we evaluate um, throughput and uh, we compare some measurements on one band, then change to a different band. And, and, and discover that bands with the higher frequencies, which work on, on the smaller distances, actually um, provide, even with, a, with a not that good a signal, uh, better throughput results. So this is, this is also a topic where you can uh, work on uh, to, to make your interface shine. Uh, finally, uh, if you look uh, on a cellular tab on LTE interface, um, uh, also some valuable uh, information. Uh, first of all, um, you can see here which band is selected, and as I said, band 3 uh, usually is, is, is the first choice, um, at least in our setups. What the mod modem does, also here in example, but additionally you have some signal, uh, some signal measurements. Uh, on the right side, I've put uh, my opinion uh, what makes uh, like the best user experience um, on, on what signal measurements you have to be, but uh, this is very challenging. Uh, so uh, one, uh, one of the limitations is the distance between uh, your device and the tower. The second uh, are obstacles between your device uh, and the tower, and there's a huge difference. Uh, if, if your device is also somewhere uh, on the tower with the direct visibility, or it's somewhere in the building uh, with the wall surround it, uh, surrounding it and, and so on, so it uh, makes, uh, makes um, quality measurements um, uh, not, that good, not that good anymore. Uh, the, the last measurement, uh, connection quality index, it's uh, up to 15, it's, it's quite a recent uh, measurement. It gives you an overall uh, uh, evaluation what's happening uh, um, in, in your network. I would say if you have it less than 10, uh, then um, uh, small chances to get throughput uh, higher than half of what's theoretically possible. Uh, let's uh, go a bit uh, next about uh, some words about LTE categories. Um, uh, similar uh, to wireless protocols, how they uh, evolve. We rem remember we had the, the B, G, A, and now N and AC standards, and uh, uh, the new things like uh, larger frames, uh, also wider frequencies, uh, also MIMO came in. Also, the same thing happens with LTE categories. At the moment, uh, for products coming from uh, Microtik, uh, we are up to category four, which promises, uh, theoretically, not more than 150 megabits download and not more than uh, 50 megabits upload. So, uh, if you are close already to 100, 
here, it's, it's a good result. Usually, uh, Microtik devices at the moment has 100 megabit Ethernet port, but for full duplex solutions, uh, in, in a total aggregate traffic, you can go a bit up. But still, uh, this is somewhere a threshold um, uh, to which you can uh, also evaluate your LTE performance. But as I said today, we speak more about designs, less, uh, less about performance. So we go next. Um, uh, it's possible uh, to configuring to configure roaming uh, on uh, either to allow it or disallow on uh, on on these routers. Uh, my experience uh, with roaming started uh, some years ago with uh, buses traveling outside EU and coming back. And um, the, the, the first trips uh, for one customer uh, uh, were um, challenging uh, because even with allowed roaming on the, uh, on the router board itself, the roaming didn't work. The problem was that you need to enable it also in SIM card level at the uh, provider side. So if you do roaming, uh, keep, uh, keep this in mind that it has to be enabled also for the for the SIM card. Additionally, I put also uh, a bit more fields here, including revision, uh, which tells what's the firmware version of your uh, LTE module. You can upgrade it. Uh, there is a script uh, in Wiki also for Microtik modules. At the moment, current one is um, version 10. So if you have something older, uh, my advice would be also to, to update to 10. OK, let's jump in designs. Um, one step. Further, we have um, come to redundant setup design. Uh, this is uh, one of the most popular um, setups after just a single connection setup. So here we have um, a, a primary connection and we can attach uh, such LTE device as the backup. Um, the idea to switch between uh, these two devices is based on the routing table, which depending on measurements, either it's a reachability of interface or reachability of a first gateway, or you can even do more advanced um, uh, measurements uh, with a ping tool or, or netwatch, if you like, and then based on the measurements, you switch between gateways. So um, also both of uh, these um, uh, connections can be LTE devices. But uh, then the routing table can switch, uh, switch it, and, and that's a very nice solution where you need higher availability. So you have two connections uh, can, um, can load balance uh, sometimes, but more uh, for redundancy. Uh, let's go next. Um, uh, this is a very powerful setup. Uh, if you have somewhere LTE devices with routable addresses. Once again, these can be even private addresses within APN, um, but uh, usually the, the most cases happen on public addresses. You make Ethernet over IP tunnel between them. Uh, if you want security, you add IPsec layer there, and then you bridge uh, Ethernet over IP tunnel with the cl client devices, so you have layer two connectivity between sites. Um, very beautiful uh, solution wherever you need uh, to expand your uh, layer two and need to work with the mobile networks, uh, this, is, uh, this is where to go. Some products have uh, two SIM card slots. Uh, this, um, this actually is also additional uh, layer for redundancy, but you need to keep in mind that you cannot use both slots together. Once again on Wiki there is a script uh, how to switch them and uh, it's uh, now your know-how and, and also a bit intelligence uh, how to evaluate. Do you want to switch or it's just a, a small outage and you are still patient to wait? Um, so, um, um, you, can, you can work with the example, but uh, the main thing to remember, there is just one modem in them. So, if, if you work with one SIM card, the second one is, uh, is, is waiting, and uh, when you switch to the second one, the first one goes down. Uh, the more reliable solution would be to have two such router boards, each with individual SIM card, then you can run both them together and even make VPNs and run OSPF, what you had uh, uh, in the first presentation, over the VPNs. Okay, let's go now to more fancy and, and, and um, more difficult setups um, uh, where we work with multiple APNs simultaneously. 
And so what's happening here is we define multiple APNs, uh, link them to the interface, and uh, each APN uh, will provide um, IP addresses as the provider's network decides, and the result of such setup um, uh, is visible here. So we have two um, different uh, IP addresses. Later we'll look how to pass through sometimes these addresses even to the server which is behind the LTE device. It's also possible, but uh, here at the moment both of them installed on LTE 1, but basically you can um, later um, decide where to actually route uh, these addresses. So use cases, um, some uh, organizations use it um, for um, independent management channel, so one APN is for management, the second one is now for the customer traffic. Some of them isolate voice and data uh, over uh, different uh, APNs and uh, later we'll look also dual stack solutions where one APN provides uh, IP6, the second one the IP4. And uh, that's here. Um, depending um, either your APN will provide just single IP6 or IP4 together with IP6. You can configure here uh, the type of addresses you want to receive. And what's also flexible, uh, you can point which is IP6 interface where to place this IP address. Not always you want to, to have it on router itself, some, sometimes you want to have it somewhere deeper in your network, so you can, uh, you can here put it either on, on, on physical uh, interfaces like Ethernet or even uh, VLANs, um, which um, provides additional flexibility. And uh, here is an example what you get from Latvian Telecom. Um, so uh, two IP4 addresses uh, and uh, also IP6 addresses, that's because um, the second the APN was providing both IP4 and, and IP6, and the first one is coming from just general um, APN. Uh, let's go in even more interesting, um, uh, interesting uh, uh, setups with pass-through. So you have noticed some time ago, Microtik added pass-through feature. It's based actually on DHCP server and hidden NAT. So IP address, what's um, given from network, is uh, removed from router itself. And via DHCP server as slash 32 address, it's sent to DHCP client. So um, DHCP client can receive it. We had a case uh, where we had to connect a device which was not capable of doing DHCP client process, just working with static addresses. And uh, we came uh, with, uh, up with discovery, just a few slides ahead, how to actually do pass-through without the pass-through at all. But that's in, in, in a few slides. Uh, if for a general pass-through you have a switch in the middle between LTE device and um, client stations, you can serve just one client, and if you don't specify any MAC addresses here, then the first client, which will come, actually will be binded to, to IP address received from, uh, from LTE. Otherwise, you need to do nothing to, to, to get through. Uh, re quite recently, I had, um, I had a request from a customer who tried to connect two S6 LTEs to one uh, router, um, both using different um, operator SIM cards, and uh, there was a problem. And the problem was that uh, both devices actually uh, gave the same network uh, IP address. Uh, by the way, maybe you already noticed uh, two slides ago, um, in, in this pass-through setup, a new IP address appeared, 10 177.01. So it's a very secret address, uh, but it appears here. Uh, and and also, also when we have multiple such setups. So the question was, was how to do actually more, uh, more reliable um, setups with these pass-through devices. And, and, and here is a small trick. So actually how Microtik uh, um, have meant it is um, the last digit of this virtual address 
depends on the number of how many APNs you have configured. Even if they are just templates uh, which you don't use uh, anywhere, they impact the last digit here on IP address. So now on the device on the right side, if you add uh, one additional APN which is never used, the last digit of the network address will increase and now we can uh, easily route through such scenario. Uh, finally, uh, what I promised, pass-through without pass-through. What we did here, um, this was a, a setup uh, for client uh, without DHCP client possibilities. Uh, so we switched off all the pass-through uh, um, settings at all. We received IP address on LTE interface, but when received, we just removed it. So with remove command, you can uh, remove. Um, you can, if you like, uh, with, within the script environment, you can keep it somewhere um, in the variables or, 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 or in your memory to be, um, to be actually um, with a more stable uh, solution after resetting the interface, you will need to do some scripting also here. And then uh, you place a similar IP address uh, with the um, previous uh, network address uh, on one of your uh, interfaces, like Ethernet 2 here. Then uh, set a static address at the client side. Uh, if the client doesn't support slash 32 addressing, you can choose any other subnet mask, like 24 if you like. It will, it, it will work the same. So now, what happened? Based on our setup, a new route, it's a dynamic active connected, was created here on the LTE unit. So when packet arrives from the network, uh, LTE device will pass this packet to the client based on the routing table. Uh, for returning pass, now when the client wants to come back, the client will send an ARP request for the gateway. Uh, even without proxy ARP, the LTE device will reply on ARP because it has the gateway IP address and uh, it's routing. So just with removing IP address, uh, you can actually uh, bypass pass-through. And uh, we made small measure measurements, and uh, for now, we believe that uh, going without the pass-through, just on the routing level, without hidden NATs, uh, we can get better performance than through the NAT. So it's interesting. You can also test. Finally, um, if you deal with pass-through, it's a small challenge for management, especially when you have just uh, one APN. So with one APN, um, two workarounds. Uh, the first one, it will be just uh, internal management from the local client uh, side. Uh, before adding interface to the pass-through mode, you add some management VLAN and put some IP addresses on management VLAN. Then these addresses can be reachable from the local side, from the clients. Uh, the second option, you add additional APN for management. This is uh, two APN scenario, and then you, could, then you could have one IP address for management, the second one um, sent to the client. That's it for to now. I remind about possibility to fly and train in Riga, and I wish you to make your LTE interfaces shine. Thank you.